What's up guys? So I watched a video by Nate O'Brien the other day where he told you that cash flow was more important than assets and it's all you should focus on. And I'm here to tell you why that is gonna screw you if you're trying to build some wealth. I know that's a bold statement for someone that's just sitting here on YouTube around 700 subscribers compared to Nate. And I love Nate's content and I watch his content all the time, but I just couldn't let this go by without throwing out my reaction. In the video I watched, Nate seemed to equate an asset as making money only when it's bringing in income and completely ignored the fact that appreciation is such a huge part of most asset classes. Now in the position I'm in on my journey towards financial independence, sort of in between, working full time and trading time for money and getting to actual financial independence. I'm in this zone where I think many of us are, where we really need to be focused on growth assets. Now, let me explain to you what the two different types of asset classes are. The way I see it, there are income assets. These are things like dividend stocks, high cash flowing real estate investments that bring you actual income. This is the area where Nate would have you focus all of your dollars towards. And on the other hand, there are growth assets. These are assets that typically don't produce a whole lot of cash flow, if any. Sometimes they might even cost you cash flow and be in the red. But these things appreciate very heavily in value. These are growth based real estate investments. These are growth based stocks, things like Tesla or Apple that are really not paying much, if any, in cash flow. And when Nate talked about assets, to be fair, he talked about land and land is really just a bad purchase. It doesn't appreciate much. It costs a lot to hold on to. So you're going to be in the red on cash flow. You can't really do a whole lot with it. So I don't think that's a very fair example of an asset. So now let's assume that you want to get to financial independence and you want to get there as fast as possible, because let's be honest, who doesn't? Let me take you through two examples. Let's first look at the stocks and then we'll go on and look at a real estate example. Now let's imagine two portfolios. There's Nate's portfolio, which is consisted of just AT&T, one of the creme de la creme of dividend paying stocks. Not a whole lot of appreciation, but a lot of stable dividend growth. And then there's my portfolio, which is 100% Apple. It does have a little bit of a dividend that fluctuates off and on, and it's got very strong growth. It's nothing crazy like a Tesla, but it's a lot more stable. Now, let's also assume that you can contribute $1,000 a month to your portfolio. Now, over the last nine years, you would have made $88,000 more by investing entirely in Apple than you would entirely in AT&T and you would be $88,000 closer to your financial independence target. Now things look very similar on the real estate side. I have a real concrete example of this one. I closed on a real estate investment property, a rental single family home last month, and it is going to cash flow me somewhere between negative 100 and positive $10 per year but it is going to increase in value by roughly ten dollars to $15,000 every single year, increasing my net worth by that amount and giving me equity in the house that I could use. Now you could flip that around and you could focus on a cash flowing property, something that's maybe cash flowing four to 5% a year and the appreciation is roughly about a two to 3%, let's say on a property like that. And that would make about $7,500 a year in total from appreciation and cash flow. Now that's about $2,500 to $7,500 less a year that you're making towards your retirement portfolio. By now you should be able to see that cash flow can lead to a lot slower portfolio growth. Oftentimes in the investing world, cash flow is looked at as a lot more safe of an investment because you're not locking up your income quite as much. Your cash is actually coming back to you, going right into your pocket. On top of that, you get to pay beautiful income tax on that money. Think about that one too. I didn't even factor those into the last examples. Probably should have done that. Would have been even worse. Whereas you're locked up in the growth based investments. Now, if you're investing in stock, that's it's normally pretty, very, very, pretty, very, pretty, very. Yeah, that's a thing. Very liquid. Same thing with real estate. For the most part, you're going to be able to sell that house for its fair market value at 
any point in time and it's relatively liquid. So I wouldn't even consider it very locked up. Now, if you're doing angel investing, private market, private equity investing, that's a whole different story. The part of his video that I think is, is very not clear, and this is something that I think is missed a lot in the financial independence space, is sort of the financial independence timeline. So when you start your journey on financial independence, you're over here, you're working a job, you're exchanging your time for money and getting a nice paycheck and paying your bills. Hopefully you're getting a nice paycheck and paying your bills. And then eventually you want to get all the way over here where you're not exchanging time for money anymore. You're just exchanging money for money and it's growing all by itself and it pays all of your bills. And what I see a lot of, a lot of people do and a lot of things taught is to go from here to here, you start buying these asset classes, these cash flowing investments right here. Now, the problem with that, as I already explained, is it's a lot slower growth in this middle period here. This is where I am. This is where I think most of people watching this video probably are. And my goal with this is to make this as small as possible. Now, my risk tolerance is a lot higher. You got to take that into account. But I am going to do everything I can to make this as short as possible, which means investing in higher, higher risk growth based stocks like Tesla, Apple, Amazon, all of those sorts of stocks. I'm going to be doing angel investing. I starting, I started a startup and I will probably be starting another startup in the near future. So I guess what I'm saying is if you're Nate and you're very near retired already, you're making a million dollars a year in YouTube income, then you only have a couple of years of income that you need to wait in order to get to this passive portfolio. So you may as well just start that now. But if if you're like most of us making a lot less with money, it's going to take many, many years to get there. And we need to accelerate that as fast as we can. We should focus on growth stocks, growth real estate, and possibly even some private equity like myself. Now, I should remind you, I'm not a financial advisor. So I'm just a dude on YouTube re reacting to another dude on YouTube. So you know, take it as you will. But this is what I'm going to be doing. And I think that we could all benefit if we think a little bit more risk tolerantly. Now, if this was helpful to you, if you think it could help someone else, please share it. Hit that like button, subscribe. I'm releasing videos every Monday and Friday at 2.45 p.m. Eastern to make financial independence a little more exciting. See you guys next time. Peace.